Welcome, brothers and sisters in the Squatch, to a new Five Minutes in the Lounge with Reverend Jeff. Today I continue with the batshit crazy events that are the Ketchum DNA study. I'm sure by now everyone is sick to death of it, and there isn't anything out there that puts it in simple enough terms for non-scientists to really get a grasp on the concepts that have been put forth by the study. First up, let's start by saying, personally, I really don't care what the classification of Bigfoot ends up. I have no vested interest in how any of the DNA results actually turn out. Other than being an eyewitness to one of these creatures in broad daylight, I have no hat in the ring, so to speak. But what I do have are promises made to me, you, and everyone else in the Bigfoot community that have yet to be fulfilled. Dr. Ketchum and others in her camp, such as David Pilates, Derek Randalls, Tom Biscardi, the famous hoaxer, put out a call looking for suspected DNA samples from Bigfoot sightings and encounters. Dr. Ketchum was not in the Bigfoot community before this, and her lab that she owned specialized in equine studies. That's horses to you and I. David Pilates, during his lectures around the country, tells the stories of how they came to settle on using Dr. Ketchum for their project. It seems the Olympic Project had already suspected that they were in possession of Bigfoot DNA samples and had been shopping for a lab that would be willing to do the work and the project. It had been stated that labs had been turning them down all around the country once the subject matter is discussed, and they were turned away at most locations, including major universities. They then looked into the private sector and had a choice of five private labs. They finally settled on Dr. Melba Ketchum. He never goes into the reasoning as to why they settled on her lab, but insists that she does have the qualifications to do the study, so they settled on her to do the work. Now that all that is covered, let us talk about what actually happened. I am not going to bore you with what samples were sent where, as the BigfootReport.com podcast of Thursday the 28th of February will do that for me. Nope, I'm going to put into simple enough terms what the labs actually did on the samples. Okay, now Dr. Ketchum received a bunch of DNA samples from around the country with suspected links to Bigfoot. Her lab processed those samples to be sent out to DNA labs blind. This means that the labs that received the samples from Dr. Ketchum just ran direct DNA testing on those samples and then returned the results to her lab. This is important to realize. These labs are not responsible for Dr. Ketchum's claims and results in her paper. This really needs to be understood. They simply processed the samples and returned the results. Once Dr. Ketchum received all the blind results, she began to interpretate them. Here is where the issues began. Dr. Ketchum began to take a broad stance on what the DNA is wrote through she was returned. She is the one who reached way out to try and link the results to humans because there was human DNA in the results returned to her. The next step she took was to analyze the DNA sequences she interpreted from the sample results she received from the other DNA labs. She took those sequences that included only partial human DNA, then asked for more funding to do next generation DNA testing and create the full genome for the Bigfoot because she was sure that she had isolated their DNA. Now the Human Genome Project took from 1990 to 2003. 13 years to claim that a complete genome for human DNA Dr. Ketchum claims that she was able to do it in under two. So how do we get a genome? Well, it is actually pretty simple. You input the DNA sequencing into the genome machine. It has some big fancy name, but that really isn't important at all. What is important is what the machine does. In order to get a full genome sequence for the input DNA data, the machine will build upon the information it has been given and return a full sequence of DNA on that subject. What this means is if you enter garbage DNA sequencing in, it will simply produce a garbage result. For instance, if I entered a sequence that included rabbit, human, parrot, and goldfish, the next generation machine would literally build a profile of that animal to match. It basically just fills in missing information to get a full picture of the subject. What you would end up with is a mismatch of sequencing that would lead some DNA people to say that there's a bipedal dog-faced human that can not only fly, but they can breathe underwater too. Picture Jurassic Park, where they used frog DNA to fill in the missing dinosaur DNA able to be able to clone them. If you were to take Dr. Ketchum's results and clone them, there is no way in the world you would end up with an 8 to 9 foot tall bipedal primate. It's a lot like putting a quart of milk into the toaster and expecting warm crispy bread to pop out. It just won't happen. This is very much like the claims that Dr. Ketchum is making and begging for anyone in the scientific community to verify. So to recap, her claims of good science just aren't true. Garbage in, garbage out. You're free to make your own decisions on what you feel Bigfoot are, but please try and take a minute to think of the possibilities that a human female and some random descendant of a lemur bred and created the human-based Sasquatch species is kind of insane. I'm not too sure about you, but Reverend Jeff here calls bullshit. 
She is refusing to supply any other labs with the samples that are left over from her study, as she knows that any other lab in the country that tests those samples will never come up with the same exact conclusion that she does. It has nothing to do with bias on the subject, but more likely to do with credibility issues within the results. Until next time, I'm Reverend Jeff, and may the Squatch be with you. Team Taser approved! <laughs>